Hello, how are you guys doing today? I'm going to talk about why so many high earners are broke. I'm curious to know what this video is about. Let's get to the video. I began my career making £35,000 working at a top tier investment bank in London. I didn't save a single penny that year. I lived paycheck to paycheck, month on month. And I remember thinking at the time, life would be so different if I was making six figures. I'd be able to buy so much more. I'd have enough left over to save and I won't feel like I'm broke. But why is it that 26% of people in the UK making 100,000 plus said that they had no money left at the end of the month and over... Wow, that sounds like America and everywhere around the world. But I won't let her keep going. Half of Americans earning more than 100,000 are living paycheck to paycheck. And why, after making my first 100,000, was it so different to what I expected? Now I know where I went wrong. And in this video, I wanted to share with you three reasons why so many high earners still feel like they're broke and how you can, in fact, feel rich at any income level. Point one, the income versus living cost dilemma. There is a quote in the book, The 4-Hour Workweek, that reads, people don't want to be millionaires. They just want to experience what they believe only millions can buy. A big part of feeling rich is driven by how far the money you earn can stretch you, how much it can buy you, essentially what is the value of every pound or dollar that you make in relation to where you live. For instance, someone making 100000 in a high cost of living area where their basic living costs alone make up 80% of their take-home pay, is going to feel a lot less rich than someone who is making the same amount, but their basic living costs only make up 30% of their take-home pay. Wow, that is very interesting. And I know a lot of people here, a lot of people in person A. And it, the thing is, that is so true. That is why if you cut your housing costs down a lot, you can make more money, save more money. But I know. We live in the Western world. We want to live like we're doing well. We want to show off our wealth or show off our items thinking that we're doing well. But the reality, you shouldn't really do that. You should do the exact opposite. And that's what companies want you to do. Buy their stuff to make you seem like they're rich. And once you get to the point, yeah, you could show it off. But a lot of people are mostly person A. And I've, in my opinion, in my 33 32 years of living, not 33, adding another year, excuse me, they are a lot of person A's and person B's. The second person has over three times more left over to spend every month on the things that they love. Now, some of that is purely our own fault. I mean, no sympathy here for anyone who is living paycheck to paycheck on a six-figure salary because their basic living costs include a penthouse and a G-Wagon. That's another story. But I'm talking about the bit that is harder to control especially when a lot of these high income jobs are based around high cost of living areas. If you're trying yes. to break into the entertainment industry, then you might be thinking to relocate to LA. Or if you want to work in tech, then San Fran or Silicon Valley are places you might be considering for the best options. Or if you want to work in a well-paid job in finance, then you might be considering London or New York. But the issue with living in these areas is that it takes a lot more money to live a decent lifestyle than it would in other parts of the country. In I agree. You can put in Atlanta too in that one. I mean, I know it's not like New York or London or San Fran or Silicon Valley, but it's getting up there. And I would not be surprised. And I know a lot of people in some areas of Atlanta, there are $4,000, especially up in the Al Alpharetta area. Oh, yeah, most definitely. And mostly people can't really afford that to these days now, but someone will. So they're expecting someone to support those expensive rents. In fact, if we only look at incomes, London households make about 15% more than the rest of the country. But almost all of that premium is completely wiped out by housing costs. London is becoming less affordable for first-time buyers and it's taking up a bigger percentage of net household income. And according to a statement in the FT, when you take that into account, a household in London is no better off than the national average. The difference between income and the living costs in these cities show that having a high salary does not automatically translate into feeling rich. Maybe the answer to considering a job in a high living cost area is living outside of that hub. It might come at the cost of a longer commute, but if it means a countryside home with a bigger garden and a golden retriever rather than a two-bedroom flat with a cat, it might well be worth it. Or if your job isn't location dependent, then working remotely. Either 
working at home for a few days of the week it saves you on the commute costs and all the other costs that come with being in the office or mm. shifting to a new low-cost country altogether if you can work entirely remotely. Point number two. I agree. I definitely agree with her on that because you got to make some hard decisions. Most people in these cities, you just can't afford. And you got to look in yourself and say, is my money going where it needs to go? If I'm feeling upset and depressed and not getting ahead, even though I'm, even though I'm doing well in my career, but the situation is I'm paying too much on my health. We need to downgrade. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong downgrading, especially in today's times. You can find yourself a good deal. The Diderot effect. The Diderot effect is a phenomenon that happens when you buy something new and that new item leads to a chain reaction of you buying more and more new things to either go with the first thing that you bought or to keep up with it. For instance, your living room looks perfectly fine, but you decide to upgrade your sofa on the whim. You want to buy a new one. Now, when that comes, your rug in comparison looks a bit old. It looks a bit dated. So you also buy a new one and then your lamp as well and then your curtains and you might as well buy a new house altogether. Essentially, the Diderot effect is one of the reasons why some people might become rich but never be wealthy. They're trapped into the cycle of earning, upgrading, earning more, upgrading. And it's especially apparent when you buy something that might change your social group. For example, you move to a new house in a more expensive neighborhood with rich neighbors who have nice cars. In that case, you might feel the need to upgrade yours so it doesn't look like a complete banger in comparison. Although it's virtually impossible to not want or feel the need to upgrade your life if you're making more money, you don't want those upgrades to completely erode the entire rise or the increase that you're getting. Because as rewarding as it might be at the time, it removes any potential for extra savings. And then you're just trapped in a cycle where you're living paycheck to paycheck and not really building wealth. And worse, there are some things that once you upgrade, it's very hard to go back business class fights, a bigger home, sending your kids mm -hmm. to extra classes or activities. And once you're used to it, it can mess with your long-term savings and financial stability. So now you know that this is a thing. And that's the first step, being aware that you're doing it. The second right. thing you could do is save in terms of percentages of take-home pay. So instead of putting, say, $500 equivalent into your savings account every month, take a percentage of your income out of your paycheck. So when you make more, you will automatically save more because that extra percentage that you're saving and investing every time you get a pay rise is what's going to help you build long-term wealth and feel rich in a way that a high salary alone won't be able to. Point. And I agree. And that's what I'm doing, saving a percentage of my income into investing because the only way you're going to get rich and wealthy is really investing yes not looking good not saying oh i make this six figure salary no 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 it's about how much you can invest hey you might as well call it saving invest because i don't know why certain people call it saving but really it's called investing because that's really what it is. I know investing is very intimidating for a lot of people. So they say saving, but the actual term is investing and making sure you invest into the right investments, not the ones that are speculative. I mean, yeah, you can invest in speculative things, but that should be a low percentage. You need to invest more in traditional things that makes more money in the long terms, especially as us humans you know, that are not working in finance, that think we're in finance, we should all invest into ET ETF or a mutual fund or an index fund. Three, the inevitable, but the legally avoidable. Many high paying jobs require some sort of higher education or degree in the first place, which comes with a cost. The cost is having to spend years paying off that student loan. When I went to university, the tuition fee for an undergraduate degree in the UK was £3,000 per year. Using the inflation calculator index, that £3,000 is equivalent to £4,200 today. But tuition fees are actually around £9,250 a year. So if you're doing a five-year degree, you're looking at graduating with a debt of £50,000 minimum before even starting your career. And these deductions in your paycheck doesn't just end with education. So when I was making £120,000 a year, 
which is a lot of money. I don't discount that whatsoever. 47,000 of that went straight to tax and national insurance. When you couple that with the fact that A, I chose to live in London and B, I got sucked into point two and upgraded my car with my very first paycheck and was paying that off for a while. The six figures definitely didn't make me feel rich in a way that I thought it would have before I achieved it. When you earn a salary, it's hard to avoid this. The deductions are always going to happen, but there are a few ways you can keep more of what you make in your own pocket. Firstly, optimize your contributions to your workplace pension. Most employers offer a match contribution, which means for every pound or dollar that you put in, they will also match that for every pound or dollar. And that gets put away into your pension before the tax man gets hold of it. And make sure you are claiming your additional tax relief if you are a higher rate taxpayer. Other things you can do at any income level is firstly, make sure your tax code is correct and that your deductions are correct because these cost you money if they're wrong. And secondly, make use of all the tax incentives that the government is encouraging. There are tax breaks when it comes to making choices that are more green, tax breaks for investing in tax-free investment accounts or operating under a company and deducting your expenses. These are all tax breaks so you can keep more of what you make whilst also doing what the government is incentivizing you. Ultimately, feeling rich isn't about making a lot of money. It's about being smart with what you have and managing it in a way that lets you experience the things that you think earning a lot of money would buy you, whilst building wealth alongside that. Even if you're not remotely close to six figures, you're probably doing a lot better than you think. And I have a video right here on four. And I'm going to end the video right here. So she pretty much explained in her opinion why so many high earners are broke. And I actually do agree with her. It has to do the lifestyle and taxes. And the only way you're going to fix that is by investing. And mostly you can invest half your income, a quarter of your income, or 10%. If you want f wealth and freedom faster, I would suggest investing more than 50%. But that's my opinion. You don't have to take it because this is not financial advice. This is entertainment. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure if you like the video, hit the like button and also put the thumbs up in the comment section and watch my next video right here. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.